Okay. Um, my name is Ming Zhang. I'm a PhD candidate of SBMI. Uh, today I'm going to present the, the work of transformation of EHR data to OMAP COM data model. And here's the agenda. First, I will give some introduction of uh, OMAP CDM. And then I will give a summary <coughs> of uh, uh, UT clinical data. And after that, uh, I will introduce uh, our transformation process uh, one step by step. And finally, we'll give some visualization of uh, results. And uh, also talk about the future work of this project and the acknowledgement. So first, I will introduce um, the COM data model on clinical observation health data. So um, as we all know, the um, observation health data is very important to create uh, reliable clinical evidence in the clinical research. However, uh, there's still a lot of challenge to do so. So first come from diverse data sources. Um, the uh, kink, uh, observational health data could come from electronic health records, the, hospi uh, the hospital billings, the insurance claims, also from uh, uh, longitudinal surveys. Um, so um, to combine such kind of diverse data source is kind of a challenge because each data source has its uh, uh, own purpose to design and also has its own terminology to present. So how to combine such kind of multiple data sources into a clinical study is a challenge. Another issue comes from um, repeatability of the study, of the clinical study on multiple sites. So in order to get uh, the good generalizability of the clinical study, we normally do the study on multiple sites but um, due to the, some uh, technical uh, environment issues or some different data formats, it's uh, kind of a challenge to do so. So the standardization of the observation data could be a good way to solve this issue. Um, so in this way, you, uh, if, you, if you turn into all the data source into standard, uh, standardized data, we could perform a efficient and reliable clinical research. Then uh, I will give some introduction of OMAP CDM. So basically, in order to do the generalization, uh, the standardization, we need some common data model. So uh, nowadays, we have a lot of common data model designed in the community research. And uh, one of them is OMAP common data model which is purpose to present the healthcare data from diverse source in a, a consi consistent and a standardized way. And which also uh, support collaborative research across different data sources. And uh, OMAP, the full name is Ob the Observational Medical Outcome Partnership. So, which is organization to for the op appropriate use of observational health database for medical study, actually. And now it's become a part of another program named the Observational Health Data Science and Informa Informatics, pronounced the Odyssey, which uh, is purpose to um, create and apply some open source third party tools to a large network of uh, um, health database to improve human health. So this diagram shows the whole picture. Um, when multiple source of data comes into uh, the transformation of uh, uh, to the OMAP COM data model, so in the community we also uh, we still uh, we also already develop a lot of uh, analysis method to apply on this um, common data model to generate some analysis results for uh, for. Uh, for repetitive use. So here we can see um, if we're going to uh, represent the uh, 
data into the common data model, we could make use of uh, our uh, available existing uh, uh, third-party tools to generate some analysis results. And here, uh, I'm going to introduce the model details. So the OMAP model is composed of different parts. Um, you can see the one is the standardized clinical data, which represent the core clinical events from the data repository. And the standardized health system data is about the uh, healthcare provider system. And the uh, standardized health economy is about the <coughs> cost of the health system. And the standardized derived element, that part is actually <coughs> logically, uh, deri uh, directly derived from the clinical repositories. So it is based on the clinical repository facts, we generated some, something. And the standardized metadata, that is about the metadata of the transformation process. So for example, we could include the, the version of vocabulary used in the transformation process. And the standardized vocabulary, which is used to define all the clinical events uh, in the OMAP data model. And for the OMAP data model, the vocabulary is a kind of flexible setting. So here's the list of the uh, terminology or um, ontologies which are included in the vocabulary. So we can see that could be come from um, drug, procedure, or lab test. So, um, so user could adapt to, uh, depends on their own uh, terminology in, the, in the, uh, their data, data repository, user could select uh, multiple or flexible set of uh, terminology to represent in the OMAP data model. So now I'm gonna uh, introduce briefly of the UT clinical data. In UT data, <coughs> we roughly have three million MRNs in the warehouse, but we need to exclude the records without at least one involved transaction. That means those, in what, uh, those records without any invoice of transaction means lots of real uh, records. And we also hired some duplication uh, algorithm to remove such duplicate records. So as a result, we have two million unique patients with spinning transaction records. So now uh, I'm going to introduce the transformation process. So first I will start with the uh, lab, uh, lab test result uh, conversion. So for lab test results in the uh, common data model, uh, we use the measurement table to present such things. So a measurement is defined as the capture of a structure value obtained through systematic examination of a person or sample. So in the measurement table, it, it captures laboratory results, vital signs, or quantitative finding. But here, we just focus on the laboratory results. The measurement table, uh, the physical structure is like this. So we can see uh, some of the other tables are related to this table. For example, the person, the provider, and the visitor. And in the, during the conversion process, uh, we found we have some challenge. Um, our test is actually convert the laboratory test lane and results to normalization part. But in the UT data, we found um, there's no standard terminology to represent the laboratory test only in the internal ID is assigned to each laboratory uh, records. And furthermore, we also found even multiple entries means multiple IDs could refer to the same laboratory test. And for the laboratory test name, it actually is not easy to get computation by computer because it's just uh, designed for the human readers. So, the same issue also happens on the test results.
so to to represent the NAV test into a standard standardized way, we need to choose some uh, uh, a standard standard terminology. So here we just choose the long code to present all the things. The long code is widely used in to present the laboratory results in the clinical study. And uh, for each long code, it has some attributes. The one is component, means uh, uh, what's measured. And the property means the character, uh, characteristic of what's measured. For example, the mass per volume, substance per volume. And uh, the attribute system means the specimen type, for example, uh, the blood, the urine. And the loin code also include the units of the measurement. <coughs> so here's the screenshot of the uh, loin code search interface developed by the uh, research community. And we can see for each loin code, we have the long lane of uh, the, the lab test, and we have a different uh, uh, attributes such as a component, the property, uh, system, scale, method, and the units. So before we start the conversion, we also do some statistics on our data. So in our data, we have uh, about 29,000 entries for lab test name. And among of those, we uh, found some of them are uh, invalid test name, so we removed them. As a result, we have uh, 21,000 uh, test name. And in, the, in those, in result table, we, we found there is uh, uh, 14,000 are unique name. So here, we also uh, generate uh, statistics on the coverage of uh, the, the frequency of each unique name. For the first 500, unique name, the coverage is 82%. And, the, and we can see, um, when we got to the first 4,000, the percentage is 98%. So that means for uh, 4,000, for those 4,000 unique names cover most of the laboratory uh, test name. So in this study, we're just trying to focus on the most, most of frequent laboratory test name here. So our solution to do the conversion is to uh, develop an annotation tool for manual review, basically. So our annotation tool includes a search interface. We could use that to uh, very easily locate the similar and related test lane in our UT data. And also, we provide some helpful information and a tool to make the annotation more efficiently. So for example, we include the distribution of lab test value range here to help the annotator to decide which kind of uh, loan code should be assigned to. And then we also include the ranking of similar tests in the loan code, which generating using the uh, TF-IDF algorithm. And uh, besides of that, we also integrate to the uh, search interface for low income code in our annotation tool. So here, this is the, what the uh, annotation tool looks like. The NAFTA pane shows the search interface for, our, uh, for the laboratory test in our UT data. So when user um, input the keyword here, and uh, they will show some, uh, the, all the test name which, at, which have map, uh, matched this keyword search. So actually in our UT data sets, um, multiple test names could refer to the same test. So here, when we search the similar test sets, we could do the annotation in the batch. So that could save some, some time. So when user um, click the, each of the test name, the right panel will show the, the uh, detailed statistic, including like uh, uh, the range value or the panels. So based on those helpful information, 
the annotator could be um, find the, the right code more easily. And the bottom right shows the uh, search interface developed by the community, uh, which is uh, to search the LOINC code. <coughs> so besides of the test name, we also have the test results need to convert. Total test results are uh, about 26 million. And the um, amount of them, 77% uh, are num numerical results and 23% are free text. And among those free text, 18% are codable results. So that means those results could be converted to code. And the 2% are invalid tests and results. For example, they could be come from comments, some results, notes, which is a uh, lot of real, actually, laboratory tests. And the 3% are laboratory test, re test results, any results. So here we just show some invalid res result examples. Um, we can see the most frequent one is uh, the image is acquired, not reported on this uh, session number. That could be an uh, example. And another is like uh, um, the TMP and uh, cancel reason and see comments, something like that. And that shows the list of uh, codable verbal results. So here we can see some of something like collective, slight, yellow, which is our adjective words to uh, describe the uh, laboratory results. So I'm going to start to. Um, Before you go on, um, can you help me understand how you differentiate between quotable, verbal, and invalid? So, for example, if you go on slide back, it seems that uh, culture and progress is a pretty meaningful result. Similar, if you go on slide forward. Oh, you mean the culture in progress? Right, so if you look at culture and progress, and then go forward, uh, so negative, none seen, and so on, mm -hmm. um, seems kind of qualitatively similar. Culture and progress is a valid state of culture. So why would that be invalid? Yeah, actually, this is uh, actually um, manually reviewed by the physician. So and maybe I, we can ask a detail for the for the physician. Yeah, because we generate some the uh, list, and then the uh, the physician will take many review on them, and so some of them were picked up. Yeah. So I guess an important point here is it's difficult to separate out the computer science from the domain knowledge. Yeah, I think that could be another kind of standard. Okay, let's get started to uh, introduce the process of uh, medication part. So the medication part uh, in the OMAP uh, it, it, uh, has three tables. The first one is drug exposure, uh, which captures records about the drug. And uh, the second one is drug ERO, which is actually derived from the first uh, drug exposure table to present a span of time uh, when a person exposed to a particular active in, a drug ingredient. And for the dose ERO, it was a derived, derived from drug exposure. And uh, we represent a span of time when a person is to be exposed to a constant dose of a specific active drug ingredient. So our task is trying to transform the, uh, the tables in our UT clinical data warehouse meaning include the medication facts and medication DE to those three tables. So in this part, uh, our biggest challenge comes from the information missing. So for example, in the table drug exposure, um, that requires the end date of the each drug use. But we still can, uh, we cannot find such kind of information in our UT data. So our solution is trying to infer those information based on existing information. For example, we could use the date supply and start date to do estimation of the end date. 
And the another issue is from the uh, terminology and the uh, terminology using our records. So we found the one six records in our UT table lack of arxnome, either arxnome or NDC code. So our solution is trying to use the automatic way to do the automatic encoding for those uh, records without any codes. And after that, we do some manual review to make sure the result is correct. So here, we, I'm going to just uh, introduce um, how we're going to do the automatic encoding and the manual review. So first, we have the OMAP vocabulary, which includes a list of uh, mapping between the concept ID <coughs> and the medication name. Then we use the third-party tool named the Luthien, which is actually an open source uh, search engine tool. We use that to create the Luthien index. And then we instructed medication phrase, which is lack of code. And, and after that, we calculate similarity score according to the um, algorithm in the Luthien. We get a ranked list. And from those rank, uh, top ranked lists, we have a physician to manually review the top ranked list to make sure which one should be correct. And here's the transformation result that it looks like. So we have the three tables. The drug exposure table including the information like the concept, the start date, the end date, and also include the quantity, date supply, and some signature information. For the drug euro table, uh, we include the drug concept ID. We also include the drug euro start and end date. And for the dose euro, besides such information, we also include the dose value. So here, we can start to introduce our um, conversion on the condition part. In OMAP model, uh, we have two tables to present the condition-related things. The one is condition occurrence, another one is condition euro, which is, has very similar structure like the drug. So for the condition occurrence, we have the condition start date, end date, and the concept. So basically just represents uh, the clinical observation of a persons of, of the uh, existence of a disease or medical condition. And the error table just represents the span of time on a given condition. So which includes the, the euro start date, end date, and the occurrence account and condition concept. In our UT data, we actually transform um, that part from the diagnose table. But in our diagnose table, we don't have the condition and the data information. But that information is required for the OMAP data model. So actually, we, for us, it's, it's kind of hard to estimate the actual data of the end date of the condition. So we just do a um, fixed rule here. We set end date equals to the start date plus condition uh, plus 30 days, which is kind of common way um, to handle this missing information in the Odyssey forum. So basically, here. For chronic disease, yeah, that's that's good. That's a good question, because uh, we don't have such information. So we're just trying to find out how to solve this issue. We asked, we posed a question on the forum, but uh, they they just suggest me to do so, like the uh, you do the fixed format, like fixed way, like plus. 30 days or 60 days, because this is a common way that they, they, they do for the example data, database actually. So suppose somebody has multiple codes um, as a source of <coughs> Suppose uh, you have a woman that's pregnant in 2010, pregnant in 2015, does that mean she was pregnant in five, for five years? Does that mean she was pregnant for 30 days, 60 days? Uh, so, um, that's one issue. Second issue is if you have a chronic disease, yes. say diabetes, or just heart failure, or something like that. 
Yeah, right. For the chronic diseases, it's, it's also very, pretty hard to evaluate, actually, the start date and end dates because it's hard to track the status of the such kind of disease through the uh, electronic health records. Presumably, you know what chronic diseases are, at least some of them. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's uh, maybe the, the things we need to figure out how to um, create some mechanism to handle the chronic disease, well, respectively. Have you thought about just asking your physicians the names of how common chronic diseases? Yeah, that's a good way, maybe. And... Uh, I'm going to introduce the transformation process on other tables. Uh, for the person and provider, in the UT data, we have some conflicts on uh, demographic information. Means uh, for the same person name, we may have the different demographic information, such as birth date and uh, also uh, gender, even. So to, to fix that issue, we choose, uh, we're just trying to mo choose the most current demographic information according to the date, the creation date. And for provider name, we also found some names like uh, ZZZXX, which is obviously not the actual one. So we do the filtering based on the provider information in voice table. Um, because in the voice table, um, the, the provider exi uh, existing in the voice table should be the real one. And yes, yes. We just found such kind of situation. So the Sorry. Yes. Right. 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 Deduplication. So actually, we did we do not do the deduplication here. So there yeah. are a number of algorithms yeah. that, uh, that can be applied. We actually tested a number of them uh, in at least three different categories: probabilistic, uh, deterministic, and rule-based. We have a fuzzy logic, and we uh, tested it with various parameters that uh, we can't say in overview. And so we have a set of parameters, and it turns out that the deterministic work pretty well, mm -hmm. um, uh, quite pretty well. I think later we, we need to incorporate this part into our pr project. Uh, I'm not sure if I missed it, but which tool do we use to identify the concept? The concept? Yeah. Uh, you mean? So, so you mean the for, for, for any part of for, for, for actually, <coughs> for example, for the medication, yeah. we, uh, in our UT data, we have some uh, like uh, five, uh, eight percent data, which actually have the, some, which are also assigned to the standardized uh, terminology like NDC or XNOM. And for those which lack of code, we do the automatic encoding and then do manual review. So you use Medley or CDs? No, we, not, we do not use that. We use the loosing to do some ranking stuff and then we we, based on the generate uh, ranking list, we do manual review, so that could save some time.
And for busy table, um, that comes from the encounter factor table in our UT tape uh, data repository. And we do the filtering according to the encounter type here. So in our table, we have the appointment uh, image, which is a uh, uh, kind of encounter type. We also have some other type like uh, audit telephone core, which is uh, always should be moved uh, during the conversion process. So now I, I'm going to show some visualization of the data. So we use the Archonis, which is an open source tool um, developed by the uh, Odyssey program. So which purpose is to try to enable the characterization and the quality assessment and visualization of the, the database. So in this tool, it has two components. The first one is our package and run within the local environment, basically on the, um, our uh, transformative transformation of the um, OMAP data, and then generate some statistical report. And another component is to use the, some website page to show and the, some a series of interactive reports, diagram, to show uh, such generated uh, Data, re, uh, data results from the first step. So here you can see the first the diagram shows the data density of the each category of the data in the, in the uh, OMAP data model. So here we can see um, the condition occurrence is the most frequent one. And, uh, uh, and then the drug error and the drug exposure and the uh, and then the uh, wizard occurrence and the uh, drug exposure and the drug error. So in the, di the diagram below, they also show the concept of per person uh, for different category of data. So we have a statistic here. We can uh, see the max, maximum, mean value, and some statistic value for each um, Category. And this diagram is show that uh, the result about the person. So we now we have the um, about three million persons, but here we did not exclude the person without any kinds of transaction billing records. And for people, um, we could say uh, the people's birth date distribution the gender distribution, the population, and the population by race, by um, different athletics. And here we just show the, um, our generated drug results, which is basically on the, based on the drug exposure table. And actually there's a two way to present this kind of uh, data. One way is that they use the, uh, uh, a format named the tree map. So in this tree map, each rectangular area represents the drug use, a specific drug use. So for example, there's, uh, if you um, move the mouse on each area, they will show the detailed information about this drug concept. So we can see uh, what's the prevalence of this drug use and uh, how many numbers are used in this drug, and even the, the records per person. And uh, the below diagram shows another way to, to visualize this result. This is from the table. So there's a list of tables, uh, table items could show each drug use in this, uh, in this data set. We also can see the same information like the prevalence and the records for, uh, for person. And uh, if you select any records in the tables, the below diagram also show the uh, prevalence for 1,000 people according to different <laughs> age group. So we could see uh, the Steve Stanton uh, 20 um, 
many grams or a tablet. Uh, it's used uh, situation in the different age group. And also, um, they differ from the, um, from the male and the female. So um, after we do the conversion, um, what we are going to do after the transformation? So basically, um, the first one is we still, uh, because in this way, we only just extract the structured data from the um, EHR. So we still have some uh, clinical information which embedded in the clinical text, which is unstructured data, need to be extracted. So we may use, could use some apply um, natural language processing methods to extract such information to make the model more comprehensive to do the clinical study. And another thing we could do is um, we could apply the existing uh, anal analytics tool or model on this data. For example, uh, in the Odyssey community, they just create some, a lot of uh, uh, tools. For example, the cohort creation and analysis tool. And also, um, they implement some protocol of clinical studies. For example, the treatment pathway, the pharmacogenetic drug study, and the drug utilization in children protocol. Here I just show some screenshots of the uh, existing analytic tools in the Odyssey forum. So this one is named the Hermes. It's uh, used to uh, search vocabulary so here we can see, uh, we could use input uh, any keywords here, and then they will show the result of the concept's name, and its class, and its domain, and, and its source. So using this search results, which we could create a concept set, used it to define clinical cohort, cohorts. So this one, uh, this tool named the CIRSI, which is kind of a cohort definition tool. So this is the list of existing um, cohort definition, actually. When we click any item, so in this interface, we could define the cohort we want. They define the cohort basically uh, by uh, defining the concept set first. So, for, uh, so here they have a concept set item a tab there. So through that, we could uh, define a concept set. For example, we could present uh, uh, diabetes. And then after that, in the expression tab, we could uh, use the, uh, the define the concept set to present all patients with diabetes. And besides of this, they also can define uh, using some additional, uh, additional criteria to define the cohorts. So once they uh, uh, finish the definition, so they will be automatically generated and uh, imported into the database for um, further use. And here is another tool uh, named uh, CALPSO, which is uh, um, feasibility of a study uh, tool. So besides of the concept, they actually use another criteria, for example, like uh, including some demographic information, uh, the gender, and uh, which should be more um, flexible to define a population. So, okay. So for this study, um, I'm just thanks for uh, my supervisor, Hua Xu, who uh, provided assistance. And uh, my colleagues, Egan Soil, who did a lot of contribution on this project also. And uh, some collaborator, Dr. Elmer, provide access, our access to the Kinko Data Warehouse. And uh, um, the Charles and Michael, who uh, did a lot of technical support there. So we thanks for them. Okay, questions? <laughs> Thank you for acknowledging it.
Uh, number two, uh, so that's great that you guys have done this transformation. We all have done this transformation. Have there been any thought of validating the data? In other words, um, how accurate is the transformation? Yeah, that's good. That's a good question. So actually, we just finished the transformation part here. And uh, basically, um, we also saw the, uh, the web page of the, uh, which including the descriptive statistics data in the UT data. I think a lot of things we need to do is just trying to, uh, to, to compare such kind of results to make sure uh, what we generated is, uh, is, is correct. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the next thing we also need to do. So in addition to comparing to the statistics pages that we generated, is there any other kind of validation you could think of doing? Sure. Uh, because in the UT clinical data, there are also some kind of noise data, okay. some noise. So, yeah. So basically, for those kind of noise, uh, for example, <laughs> the, the age, some, some kind of people search may be more than 100 or 200. Maybe this is a kind of obviously a lot of correct value, but uh, such kind of things. There's some, there's some kind of sorry, I mean, the person's age. Person's age. Yes. Right. Okay. So uh, that that's only one example. So we also saw another kind of example in in other category of data, such as drugs and and uh, and uh, uh, medication and, and uh, lab tests. So I think we need to make some uh, criteria to find out. How many data a lot uh, a lot of obviously uh, incorrect data? So there are two issues that I think are becoming a little bit conflated. Number one is the quality of uh, or, uh, or uh, and we can talk about quality and quality of the data. So in other words, people that weigh more than the mass of the earth. So that's not a problem of transformation. That's a problem of data collection or data reporting or what have you. So that's uh, the transformation process has nothing to do with that. Yes. And then there are problems that may be introduced by transformation to a particular data model. So uh, might those be separately uh, evaluated? One of the challenges, of course, that Achilles and tools like Achilles are, are, are intended to help with is to uh, uh, slice and dice the data set in various ways so that at least uh, uh, some problems uh, can be identified. Right, right, right. So yeah. would that be part of future work? Yeah. Thanks. Another question? So, uh, did you uh, transform the uh, entire uh, data set into clinical data warehouse? I think most of them. Most of them. Yeah, uh, and do little other researchers kind of. Sorry? Will, will other uh, researchers? Oh, you mean there's uh, other kind of research about this, or? Uh, look, um, other people using. Oh, using the transformation. Yeah. So actually, we just finished this transformation process. I think maybe <coughs> later we have a lot of more and more projects that use this. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, of yeah. course, within the rules of using PHI. Of course. Yeah. So not, you know, there's no intent to make it available to the research community. Right, right, right. But certainly, the folks at UT. So um, this is a rich amount of information and challenging work. I know that's a big part of the uh, future of our ability to use big data to analyze and approach records. Um, in the data that you have, uh, for instance, are there, one of the problems I think I agree with Elmer is that um, the conditions and concepts, the problems, the diagnoses, that's a real challenge. Um, is the diagnostic data for lab test and collection or your prescription are they tied to a condition? That is, uh, I, I think for diagnostic studies, like an x-ray or a test, a lab test, you have to put the diagnosis in as for the reason why you're getting the test. Medication, if you're on metformin, you know, it won't get say test for the diabetes. Do you have that data in your data set? You mean in your UT data set? Yeah. I think um, actually uh, we transform the, the the each individual part from the in each individual tables actually. For the condition, we use the diagnosis table, 
and for uh, not a part, we use the maybe some separate tables. So, is there a table that has the connection between keep results and condition or medications and condition? Medication, condition. Um, I'm not very sure about that. Maybe consult. I, I actually don't know. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, the, the, the kind of general answer, which actually doesn't answer your question, is we, we have whatever all script collects. And yeah. So to the extent that all script collects, we, we should have the real stager. So we, could, we would have to look in there and see if it's all sort of collected. I would think it might be because it's necessary for building, right? That, that could allow us to look at a path of, uh, it's like diabetes. Well, they just have these counter codes, but it's tied to metformin. The neuron is still on metformin, you can infer they probably still have diabetes. Yep. Yes. That's, that's what I'm talking about. So I, I just don't know. So as you know, for things like x-rays, it sometimes, you know, we rule out something. That, is, that, that adds another whole risk. Yeah. Uh, the famous case of uh, Google Health in Boston, they started collecting the diagnosis data put to the x-rays. And every time they made a stand, they said cancer. When they didn't, they were just ruling it out. So okay. understanding the connection of Uh, when we went through some uh, diabetes data in UT data set, we find some inconsistency between the free test and the like the numeric uh, data. So do you have any suggestion how to transform this, how to deal with this inconsistency? So you mean that uh, you found that there's an inconsistency between the uh, free text and the yeah. structure data? Um, so actually, in our process, we only transform the structured data here. So maybe later we are going to um, trying to convert the uh, free text only, or so. Uh, we also think about this issue because uh, when 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 we before the, this kind of step, because the, in the clinical text we also uh, we may found some always can found some inconsistent because the flexibility of uh, the text use, uh, the language use. So I think the structured data could be a kind of standard or a more uh, kind of a golden standard we could use to leverage how we extract the, uh, when, when we extract the data from the uh, free text. So that could be a way to do. And um, and uh, um, maybe we could use some NLP technologies to to generate some um, maybe conflicts extracted from the free text only. So, for example, um, in the uh, multiple kinkin nodes, we could find some um, the kind of uh, um, records which is maybe not matchable. So we could use some uh, uh, NLP technologies to do the, some uh, generalization uh, statistics to um, find out, trying to figure out which is true, which is uh, which is not.